knock, knock. Who's there? Mother Nature. Mother Nature, who? Mother Nature, a term we commonly use to personify nature. She's been knocking on our doors for years, hoping that we hear her plea. But it seems like we haven't. So much so that she's uncovering the dead bodies of climbers that made it to Mount Everest. It is due time that we acknowledge that climate change is no longer a doomsday prophecy, but a reality. What is climate change, some of you might ask. Climate change is the significant changes in global temperature, precipitation, as well as wind patterns or other measures of climate over several decades. Usually when we look at graphs, if they go up, that's a good sign. But in this one, not really. The atmospheric carbon dioxide has never been above this line, but it has been ever since the Industrial Revolution. That's really not good news. And if the graph is not enough, look at this. The glacials are retreating across the world, causing sea levels to rise. The oceans are warming, and also ocean acidification, thanks to all the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, causing marine creatures to suffer and also impacts the ecosystem. Last but not least, we have extreme weather patterns, droughts and heat waves. We probably don't experience much of it in Malaysia, but other countries are really facing it. Causes of climate change. I'm sorry, my friends, it's not just deforestation. It's so much more than that. It's agriculture, technology, transport and travel, as well as livestock production. Climate change can also be summarized in two words, carbon footprint. Carbon actually is a shorthand for the different greenhouse gases. And footprint is actually a metaphor for the total impact of an object or an activity. We will be using the measure CO2e to measure the carbon footprint, that is the total climate cha change impact of all greenhouse gases. What can you do about it, you might ask? What can I do about it? What can we do about it? First, is to be aware. If you don't know what it is, you will never know how you should be responsible for it. And we're looking at this. It's only a $50 sign, but your impact is more than just $50. It's the impact of what you do, what the Earth has to bear. 50 ringgit, that's not much. But the Earth has to bear the cost from creation, usage, as well as disposal. Creation, where your raw materials are obtained. How are they obtained? Usage, how you use it. How is it stored? How is it transported to you? And last but not least, disposal, something we always forget that we are responsible for. Do we think recycling it makes a big difference? Sometimes not, because we aren't recycling the correct way. Or throwing in the trash bin. Sometimes we're like, OK, we've thrown it in the trash bin, and it's no longer my responsibility. It's how it gets to the landfill and where it ends up after that. We will be looking at three main areas today, technology, fashion, as well as food. We will be looking at the carbon impact of these areas and we, what we can do about it. The values of the carbon dioxide emissions are estimations based on the book, How Bad Are Bananas? by Mark Berners-Lee. We will start with text messaging. We send text all the time. But do you know the impact of one text? That's 0.014 grams of carbon dioxide emission. That's not a lot. And 100 texts, you can do the math, that's 1.4 grams of carbon dioxide emission. And it's still not a lot. But the world's text for a year, that's 32,000 tons, I repeat, tons of carbon dioxide emission. That can power few flights from Hong Kong to London. And this is only if we consider that text 
the text messages that you send have 140 characters. That's almost equivalent to one tweet. And also in consideration that your mobile devices use only one watt of power to send your text. What you can do about your text messages? Number one, send text messages in one message. I'm sure many of you, when you want to wish your friends happy birthday, you spell H-A-P-P-Y, then another message, B-I-R-T-H-D-A-Y. Do you really have to do that? Is your friend not going to understand if you say it in one sentence? Next, do not send spam messages. Encourage your relatives who send good morning messages that you do not read to stop sending them. Because, it's, yes, it's, it might be free to send those messages, but the earth has to bear a cost. Not your uncle or auntie. The earth has to bear a cost. All right? And something we don't often do because we feel some guilt if we do it, leave WhatsApp groups when they are no longer important because people are going to send you messages that you do not read or do not care about and you do not even reply to. Next, web search. We ask Google quite a number of questions a day and Google has estimated to receive 200 to 500, I'll let you guess, is it hundreds or thousands or millions? It's billions inquiries a day. The energy Google uses is 0.2 grams of carbon dioxide emission. That's quite a small number, but that's only for one search. And if you use an efficient laptop, that's 0.7 grams of carbon dioxide emission. But if you use a power-hungry machine, that's 4.5 grams of carbon dioxide emission. Essentially, why these values make a big difference is because the internet is not a space. The internet occupies space, okay? We have local servers that need to power your search. Your phone requires energy to power that search. Your laptop does too. What you can do is to ask Google questions using your smartphones. They are smart for a reason and not using power-hungry machines because they consume a lot more energy. Next, emails. We receive them and we send them. We're not talking about one or two emails. We're talking about thousands that flood our e inboxes or even sent mails. We have a variety of emails, not just important emails, but unimportant emails. We have spam emails too. And as you can see, the impact of a spam email is 0.3 grams of carbon dioxide emission. That's a very small number, once again. And a normal email, four grams of carbon dioxide emission and a long email with attachments. I'm sure my lecturers over here know what we're talking about, <laughs> right? And they're all small numbers if you're looking at it individually, but it's not that. You're probably wondering why the spam email only accounts for so much lesser carbon dioxide emission as compared to our normal emails. This is because, do you read your spam emails? You look at the subject, oh, it's a spam email. I'm not going to open it. But when it's an important email from an important person, you open it, you read it, you read it one more time, and you read it again. Because you're like, hmm, how do I reply this? Okay, let me draft it out. And you still go back and look at it, and you're like, okay, let me answer this question, this question, this question, and then you sign off. That requires so much more energy than your spam emails. And your attachments, they make a difference too. What you can do about this is to be mindful of the emails you send. Do not reply all unless necessary. Unsubscribe to newsletters that you no longer read. And number three, we receive notifications from Twitter, Facebook, and other social media platforms on our emails. Do we really need double notifications? Do you even read them? I'm sure those on your social media accounts you already ignore. And what more your email? <laughs> Next, we have mobile phones. We have an hour a day. That's 3.4 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. And we scroll for hours and hours and hours. Then we have our global mobile usage a day. That's 340,000 tons of carbon dioxide emission. Keep scrolling, my friends, keep scrolling. Why not? You don't bear the cost, the Earth does. 
Why matter? Why care? Right? Keep on scolding, keep on procrastinating. This is your call on what you want to do. I'm not going to tell you what to, what to do here. Next, fashion. Very interestingly, it's an industry that consumes so much energy as compared to the aviation industry as well as the shipping industry. That's because they are highly energy intensive and have a long supply chain. Let's look at what we wear and how it impacts the environment. Our cotton t-shirt, that's three kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. Our basic tee, three kilograms? Yes. Our nylon traveling trousers, six kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. Jeans are about the same value. And the very shoes that we leave footprints with, that's 11.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. What you can do about this is to start thrift shopping whenever possible. You can start renting clothes. If you need a prom dress, rent it. Why buy it? And last but not least, swap clothes. Your friend might have better clothes than you do. And food. Who would have thought what we put on our plate has an impact on the environment? We're eating vegetables, fruits, and sometimes meat but they do make a difference. They make a big difference, actually. An apple. Can someone here tell me what's the cost of an apple? Oh, seems like nobody knows the cost. Okay, that's about a dollar, all right? Because apples don't grow loca locally. And the cost that the earth has to bear for your one apple, that's 10 to 150 grams of carbon dioxide emission, depending on where you're from and where your apple is coming from. I'm talking about the fruit, yeah? Okay. And your four ounce raw beef stick, that's two kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. Two kilograms, not grams, two kilograms. And then we look at a leg of lamb that we have during our kanduri, during raya. That's 38 kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions, my friends, 38. 38. I hope that number sticks in your head every time you look at a leg of lamb. It's not just a leg of lamb. It's 38 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. And what you can do about it is to buy local fruits whenever possible. Buy fruits and vegetables from the market because they come without the packaging. These values are because of the packaging. And number three, reduce your meat intake if possible. Maybe not chicken or fish, because they're not as harmful as a leg of lamb or your beef steak. This is because ruminants actually release methane. Methane is actually 25 times more harmful than carbon di dioxide. And to surprise you, livestock production really affects our environment. Next. Oh. All right. Next, we have the general overview of some things. We will look into paper bags. Many of you think that paper bags are a lot better than plastic bags. But my friends, to produce paper bags, they require a lot of energy. They're not much better than plastic bags. They are required to be a lot heavier to carry the weight of your items or the things in your bag, which then increases the carbon footprint. A recycled and lightweight paper bag accounts for 12 grams of carbon dioxide emission. That's a very small value. And an elaborate virgin paper bag, the paper bags that you get once you've gone shopping to buy a pair of clothes, that accounts for 80, kilo, 80 grams of carbon dioxide emission. And you might think, What's the answer then? Let's take a moment to thank TEDx Sunway University for giving you a cotton recycling bag. But my friends, you would need to use that cotton recycling bag 7,100 times for it to have less of an impact than a single use plastic bag. Did you know that? 7,100 times. So every day of your life, please carry that bag with you. <laughs> For 7,100 days, carry it with you and use it. Next, 
drying your hands. Every time you go to the washroom, you dry, you dry your hands if you wash them. Um, and that totally depends on individual personal hygiene. If you let them drip, that's zero grams of carbon dioxide emission. People used to do that. A paper towel, only if you use one, that's 10 grams of carbon dioxide emission. And if you choose to use the standard electric dryer, put your hands in, and that's 20 grams of carbon dioxide emission. We're talking about dryers that actually use heat and not the air to actually blow the water droplets. Now, let's take it into perspective. Imagine every time you use the university toilet, you would charge 10 cents if you use one paper towel. And you would charge 20 cents if you, if you use a standard electric dryer. Hmm, 10 cents, 20 cents, not much. But do you know, my friends, we use the toilet about five times a day. So let's do the math. So if every time you go to the toilet and use a standard electric dryer and you pay 20 cents and you do that five times, right? The cost the earth has to bear is 100 grams of carbon dioxide emission. And you don't just go to the toilet one day, lah, okay? You go to the toilet every day, every day, every week, every month. So that's approximately 365 days. So let's take 100 grams multiplied by 365 days. That's 36,500 grams of carbon dioxide emission. Hmm, not that big because we're looking at it in grams. But that's 36.5 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. You could probably eat a leg of lamb that you wanted earlier because they're almost the same value. And maybe sometimes you go to the toilet a lot more. Next, we have a kilogram of rubbish. We dispose them without thinking of the impact. We keep throwing them away, not wondering who has to bear them. It's not the uncle that works at the landfill. It's the earth that has to bear them. Garden waste, that's 200 grams of carbon dioxide emission. That's if they end up at the landfill. But you can choose for it not to. If you start composting, it's so simple, but I don't understand why we don't do it. Just put away your waste in a bin, leave it there for a few months, and it will become compost. And your compost can also be used again in your garden. That's the cycle. But we don't seem to be using them that way. And av an average bin content, that's 700 grams of carbon dioxide emission. So we have multiple bins around our campus. So you can do the math. One day, walk around the campus, count how many bins we have, and then multiply each bin by 700 grams. And aluminium and copper. We think that we're doing a great deal when we look at aluminium and copper, just because we throw it in the recycling bin. But some of us don't even know how to recycle aluminium and copper. But if you don't throw them in the recycle bin or even practice good recycling practices, that ends up in the landfill. And a kilogram of it accounts for nine kilograms of carbon dioxide emissions. And with that, now you know that the earth has to bear the cost of your text messages, of what you eat, and what you wear. Just because you don't see the cost that the earth has to bear doesn't mean it's not there. It is due time that we start budgeting our carbon footprint just like how we budget our allowance or our income. For instance, some of you might save on bubble tea just so you can go on a vacation. And you should be doing the same with your carbon footprint. The future generation will follow our footsteps, which then means we have to leave the right footprints. If the climate can change, so can we. Thank you.